Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, Carlos Eduardo Morales Lopez. I am a student from the environmental engineering career. And I am from Mexico. And I'm going to present this work titled Comparison of Environmental Impacts of Activated Carbons Using Life Cycle Assessment Methodology. Before I start the presentation, I want to apologize uh, for any um, mm, este, uh, any production mistake or orthographic mistake because uh, uh, may occur during this presentation. And I want to thank all my co-authors. Uh, without her support, I couldn't be here. But that's that's it. Um, for this presentation, uh, it will divide in four steps, stages. Uh, first, background and objective. Uh, second, methodology. Then, results and discussions. And finally, a uh, conclusion. Here's a short list of uh, the main abbreviations I will use during this presentation. AC for activating carbon. Uh, CA for chemical activations, CBAC for coal based activated carbon, LCA for life cycle assessment, and PEI for normalized potential environmental impacts, PA for physical activations, and BBIC for vegetal based activated carbon. And also, I'm going to use the Greek character alpha as the index of sustainability. And it's important to know that if alpha increases, the sustainability decreases as well. Okay, so I'm going to start talking about uh, the activated carbon. Basically, activated carbon is an absorbent material synthesized from carbonaceous materials with high carbon content. Uh, and it's an excellent absorbent. It has uh, various um, applications in the um, in the uh, industries, uh, but currently the production of this activated carbon is based on using fossil materials as raw material, and this is causes negative impacts on the environmental. For example, a uh, previous work of the Hiba Air Group has shown that the use of uh, CBIC in selected stages of uh, GBR biorefinery contributes to a potential environmental impacts such as ecotoxicity and human toxicity. And particularly, this is, uh, is the case of the biorefinery that produce biological hydrogen, uh, methane, and concert of low molecular weight, organic acid, and solvents, and a concentrate of cellulotic enzymes, saccharific liquors, and bio nanoparticles. Uh, like I said, uh, activated carbon has various uh, applications. It depends on the type and the quality of the activated carbon. For example, uh, a metering quality activated carbon can be used uh, to eliminate odors, and uh, more quality activated carbon can be used for uh, system of filtrations. Here's a short list to the applications. There's a, an alternative to solve the problem that use uh, coal based activating carbons. And that is to replace this for uh, activated carbon made from vegetable, from biological <laughs> uh, materials, okay? So if I want to uh, use those system materials, uh, I need to know how to act, how to activate these materials. Basically, there are two different ways to activate low-cost biological carbonaceous materials and create activated carbons, and that ways are the physical and chemical activations. Uh, physical activations, or PA, it's a two-stage two -stage process that basically consists of exposing the raw material to a uh, moderate temperatures in an absence of oxygen. This is the process is called carbonization, and then the, car the charcoal 
produced from that carbonization exposed to uh, high temperatures in the presence of an oxidizing gas uh, like steam. And that's uh, the activation. And for the chemical activations, the process occur simultaneously. Uh, basically, we use an oxidizing uh, agent like uh, acid phosphoric acid to impregnate the raw material and then exposing to a moderate temperatures. Uh, both of them has, has have the, their advantage and their disadvantage. Uh, the focus of this project, this work, is the, just the production of the activated carbon. We exclude the raw material extraction and the end of the life of the activated carbon. Just focus on the pretreatment until uh, the post-treatment and then the activated carbon production. And for the raw material, we decided to use coconut shell because uh, there are two reasons for that. Uh, first is, his, is its abundance. Uh, coconut is produced for more than 19 countries. Just in Mexico in 2020, uh, the production was 2,036 tons. And the other uh, reason is uh, his, its composition. Uh, coconut has a really high carbon content and a low ash content. The, those are important things to like, choose a raw material for activated carbon. The main objective to this presentation is to perform a comparative analysis of the environmental sustainability of the activated carbon production from fossil origin versus another activated carbon from vegetable from vegetable origin. Okay, the methodology. For this presentation, uh, we evaluate as each as the, uh, activation process uh, with three different scenarios. Each scenario consisted in evaluate a different granulometry distribution percentage. And also we use a light cycle assessment and in normalized potential uh, environmental impacts for evaluate the potential environmental impacts of the activated process and the activated carbon possible and vegetable. And we use uh, the index alpha to know how, to know where is the option is more sustainable uh, in quantitative form. Well, uh, light cycle assessment is a methodology that uh, can help us to uh, evaluate since the beginning and the, the product and the end of the life and consists just in four, st four steps, four interactive steps. Uh, first, the goal and scope. Then we create an inventory analysis, then evaluate the analysis and the interpretation for this work of the fusional unit was one kilogram of activated carbon. And we use the software CIMA Pro and the method received to evaluate that is the, to evaluate it. And the alpha index of the Gebauer environmental consists in the, the summatory of the normalized potential environmental impacts. And this is the this index has uh, the same unit. It's person per year uh, by uh, a kilogram of uh, activated carbon. And that can be zoomed, that's subtracted and divided, so we can compare the, uh, um, the, pro the activations with this, uh, with this um, with this unit, results and discussion. First, we have here the physical activation versus the chemical activation. As we can see, uh, in the left side, we have the 18 uh, categories from the recipe midpoint. And we can see that the, 
the main categories impacted are the marine toxic ecotoxicity, freshwater ecotoxicity. Uh -huh. este. Marine ecotoxicity, freshwater ecotoxicity, human carcinogenic toxicity are the main uh, categories impacted by the production of activated carbon. Right? Th those are the same that they, they found in the uh, work uh, from the GBIR group. And we can see that the uh, chemical activation with 10% of uh, granulometry per, uh, distribution is the higher, the, 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 is the category with the higher impacts, followed by the three uh, of the physical activations. So we can say that the chemical activation has este, uh, lower impacts in two of the uh, scenarios, and one of them is bigger than the others. Then we evaluate the uh, activated carbon from uh, coal based origin versus the uh, vegetable activated carbon with the minus, minus uh, impacts in the categories. And we can see that the difference is really, really uh, big. <laughs> um, basically, we can say that it's more sustainable to use a uh, vegetable activated carbon than a uh, coal based activated carbon. But that we can see here in the results. These are the alpha values obtained from the NPI and the LC. And we can see that the activated carbon from granular, this is the fossil is the activated carbon, it's to for uh, to 20 times bigger than the others. And if we, uh, uh, well, we, uh, we calculate the average value of physical activation and chemical activation to see what, uh, which activation is more sustainable. And with this, we can say that a chemical activation is more sustainable than physical activation. In conclusion, the, the categories of environmental impacts that were dominating the production of activated carbon are marine toxicity and freshwater ecotoxicity, carcinogenic human toxicity, and non-carcinogenic human toxicity. These categories are the same that the group of Heber found on their, uh, on their job. And chemical activation is more sustainable than physical activation due to present a minor alpha value. And alpha values from the vegetable base activated carbon is two, is 30 times, no, 23 times minor than the coal base activated carbon, which makes it a more sustainable option. And it looks like the using of vegetable base activated carbon instead of a coal base activated carbon in the Geber biorefinery could improve the environmental sustainability of the biorefinery. But these studies are undergoing. And thank you very much for your time.